back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, where today we're talking about this specimen here. Now, its scientific name is Portulaca grandiflora. The specific variety is Happy Hour Red, and well, deep red, and you can kind of see why. I mean, look at that color. Definitely darker red than the pointy stick of destiny. But that's beside the point. Its common name is Moss Rose, and yes, it is a cousin of the other Portulaca known as Purslane. Now, it is, they are both in the Portulacaceae family, which consequently that means they're related to elephant bush, the ornamental plant that you see at the, uh, at the uh, hardware stores every so often in the garden section. As I mentioned before, Portulaca means little door. Portu, Portula, or thereabouts, is door and the ACA on the end is a diminutive. It refers to the shape of the seed capsules because it's like a cup with a cover on it that looks kind of like a round door or a port. Okay. Now, grandiflora means large flower, which refers to the size of the flowers. They are pretty big compared to the wild variety. However, when compared to the pers cultivated purslane flowers, they're not so big. But that's okay. We don't judge. Now, this plant is native or its precursors, are native to Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay, making them a technical native for the New World. A technical native in the United States because they have naturalized, but a native to our part of the world. Now, uh, there are hardy in USDA zones 10B through 12, full-on perennial, and they are considered an annual from 10A through 2. Okay. The soil pH for... Portulaca is 5.5 through 7.0. Its exposure is full sun, and I do mean full laser southern sun. The height can be 8 to 10 inches, and the width can be 10 to 12 inches. Now, this is a 14-inch hanging basket. By the way, in the the other video, I talked about the, the purslane video. I talked about why I would tie strings around this to prevent sag, and this is doing it. But this is a thicker liner than the one in the other one. Choose your hanging basket planters wisely, folks. I'm just saying. Now, this plant is growing in plain potting soil, so keep that in mind also. It has other names. At one point, it was known as Portulaca umbraticola. Why? Don't know. But it's listed as a out-of-use synonym. So older books may have it as that. Just keep that in mind. The leaves, root, flowers, and seeds are all edible. The seeds, as I mentioned in the poor, in the purse lane video, and in this case also, can be ground into flour, though considering how small the seeds are, they're like dust, diminishing returns. It is toxic to dogs, cats, and horses. Okay. It is known potentially to treat hepatitis and cirrhosis of the liver. However, before you use any garden plant to treat any condition, you should consult a qualified practitioner. To verify what you are doing is the right course of action for your particular condition. The last thing I want to hear is someone decided to, I don't know, go hog wild and snort an entire hanging basket of purslane to treat scurvy or some crazy stuff like that. We have enough quackery on the internet already. We do not need folks doing bad things to themselves. Now, I want to talk about some of the varieties because the development of Moss Rose is quite its own thing. Now, there are, you may find these in circulation, folks. So, Afternoon Delight. Two-inch flowers that stay open longer. Okay? Now, remember how I talked about photo periods? You're going to hear about that in a moment. Happy Hour. Reduced photo period requirement. Blooms earlier in the season. Okay, I've grown that one. Margarita is a compact variety. Sundial is an early blooming variety where the flowers open in cool and cloudy weather. Tequila is slightly more tolerant of cool and wet weather, but ultimately will not tolerate having wet feet, which Purslane and Portulaca will not tolerate being in a puddle of water. Happy Trails is basically it replaced tequila and has a much better photo period tolerance. Now, by photo period, what it means is the amount of light it receives to encourage its blossoms to open. So if I took one of these plants in the morning, 
just before the blossoms open, like, you know, when, the, when the, there were a ton of them and I brought it in and I kept it out of direct sunlight, those blossoms would not open because the plant would believe, hey, by the way, it's cloudy. The chances of me getting pollinated are non-existent. Let's not do this. Now, there are night blooming things in the garden that are pollinated by moths and other night flying insects. It's obvious that in the case of first laying, it's relying on a daylight insect, like a bee, a honeybee or something, to come out and do the do. It's an interesting biological adaptation. Now, of course, our plant in question here is part of the happy hour group, which is the reduced photo period and blooms earlier. Well, they're, you know, they're the ones that are making the rounds this year, but next year it'll be something else and we'll see. As with purslane, or portulaca, yeah, purslane, the leaves are edible, and they have all that nutrient value. However, these little tiny needles kind of, um, that's an exercise in pushing the boulder up the hill only to watch it roll back down again, I think. Despite that, if you're desperate, it's edible. This plant will also uh, re -sow itself pretty aggressively if you let it. Now, just a short story. How did I first encounter Portulaca, which is the name I knew it under way back in the day? Well, uh, a neighbor... A neighbor actually had sown a bunch of it by seed in, I presume it was by seed, in two whiskey barrel planters. And it came up, and there was this fluffy stuff, and it was a mixed be bevy of colors. So it was whites, pinks, reds, yellows. It was gorgeous. It really was. And then by the second year, it had spread to the cracks between the asphalt and the slate pieces that were used to make their sidewalk. And then the year after, it spread further. And soon, in between every crack and crevice in front of their house was purslane, or portulaca, busting out all over in random colors. And the interesting thing is, it started to demonstrate broken colors, too, where it was bicolor in irregular patterns. It was amazing. This stuff was re itself everywhere, all because the slate pieces and the asphalt were keeping the soil beneath just warm enough that the seeds wouldn't freeze. And this was in New Jersey. And that was my first encounter with this plant. And I realized this plant barely needs any care. It doesn't really need much water. It doesn't need special soil. It is a succulent, but it is not a cactus. Even though, if you look very carefully in here, on the you'll see little fluffy things that look like glotchids. They're not even prickly, whatever they are. They're just hairs. Weird hairs. So, this is a plant that's definitely worth growing. Definitely worth putting in hanging baskets. Definitely worth showing off to your friends. Plus, it attracts the pollinators, and that's a win-win for everybody. So, that's all I have for you in the case of moss rose. If you have any comments about growing moss rose, please leave them in the comments section. I'd love to hear back from all of you out there. If you think this format of video is better, I'd love to hear about that also. Additionally, if you haven't already, subscri please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please hit like, and in the description for this video, at the very bottom, you'll find a link to my forage series for forage foods out there in the southeast that you can eat, but this can apply all over the continental United States. Can't say much for Alaska or Hawaii, but you get my drift. So, with that said, you should have some moss rose in your garden. I highly recommend it, and thanks for watching. As always, folks, keep them growing.